Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson from motionworks.net back with a short substance painter tip for you. I just want to talk a little bit about edge wear. I've been working on the Beretta pistol and I've done the metal and I'm just onto the edge wear on this and I'm just doing something very subtle. And what I'll do is just switch these layers on one by one and we'll just talk about it and hopefully there'll be something in there that's useful for your workflow. So this is the base raw model. Now I have this steel parkerized raw. The original parkerized preset was a blue metal, but I've just changed the color of this down here in advanced parameters. You can see I've made this quite bright. And increase the scratches, increase the age. Because above that, I have the original steel parkerized. Let's turn that on. And to that, of course, I have metal edge wear applied. And if you're not sure about metal edge wear, where to apply that, basically you just select the mat and choose add generator and you'll find metal edge wear in the generators. So I'll just delete that for now. So I've gone through and made some adjustments to the metal edge wear. In the examples that I'm using uh, as reference, so I can find one here, for example, this one here, it's really, really fine, the amount of edge wear. I don't want the gun to be really damaged. I just want it to have a little bit of wear, a bit more like, I guess, like this than anything else. This is probably a little bit too uniform, kind of a combination of, um, of this and this. So I've set up my edge wear settings. You can see the wear level is very low and the grunge amount is also very low. One of the things that you get with edge wear is you often get these really straight lines and these are a dead giveaway that this is um, not a real um, gun or a real object. So you need to break these kinds of things up. And I mean, I learned when uh, I started using Substance Painter that you want to stay parametric as long as possible. So you want to try and get as close as you can using these generators to the final look. And then you go in and make your adjustments. And this is about as close as I could get to those thin lines that you saw on the reference image. So I knew that I'd have to go in and fine tune. Now, this was way too bright. So what I've done is I've added the levels effect and just darkened that all down. You see that's, it's like the edges have been rubbing, but they haven't been chipped away. So we're not seeing the pure uh, silver, the clean silver underneath, because I'm doing that with another layer. And if I just alt click on the mat, you can see that very clearly there. So the first thing I do when I've got this is I'll add the paint effect just by choosing add paint, not painting directly on the mat. It's more flexible to use a paint object. Just turn that on. And you can see I've gone through with a dirty brush and there it is there. Let's make it a bit smaller. And I basically just tried to break it up a little bit. I didn't want it too much. That's the wrong color. I want it to be white. And just gone through to break it up. I'm working in 4K. I tend to do uh, this kind of fine tuning in 4K because you just can't see what you're going to get working in 2K. So anyway, I've gone through and just broken that up a little bit, but you can see it's still getting a fairly sharp line. It does look a lot better. Let me just come back here. It's a little bit better, but anywhere I haven't brushed, we're still getting a fairly even line, and I think that's not very realistic. I could go in and add a blur, and I might even do that um, for, for this as well. But another thing you can do is add a warp. So if I select levels, right click and choose add filter and find the warp, which I think is down the bottom, right down here. Look at the difference this makes. You can already see it. Once again, if I alt click on the mat, you see it really breaks that up. And I'm no longer getting any perfectly straight lines. It's fairly grungy and I probably want to go in and fine tune the warp settings. 
the intensity is reasonably low and should bring that down even more. There you go, something like that. But it just breaks that up and makes that look more realistic. So warp, levels and warp in this case, this is how it looks without it. Super sharp lines, which look terrible. Levels, warp, and we're still getting a little bit. I probably want to go in with my paint and just reverse that. Because this is a, you know, a corner, probably be a little bit more worn on this area. It's probably too much. Bring that right down. And I've gone as far as I can pretty much with the parametrics. And this is where I've really got to go in and fine tune this and make it look as realistic as I can. I've got to spend a bit more time on it. Obviously there's no dust or fingerprints or anything like that yet. This is just focusing on the edge wear. Now, I went ahead and I duplicated the raw Parkerized steel layer and I added that up above. And you can see this one is actually getting right down to the raw metal. And you can see I've got the uh, normal metal rough height and color channels active. And having that height is really good because I get a little bit of indentation in there. So you're gonna get it, you're gonna definitely gonna get some, um, some dings in the metal. I could go through and add some more of that. I thought it'd be nice to have the um, uh, the raw metal revealed, but also have some little little dents or dings where that's being revealed. So once again, I'll clicking on the mat, turning on paint, a little bit hard to see against the black, and just breaking that up. And once again. I could come in here and right click and choose add filter and add a warp to make that even less uniform. Okay, so metal edgeware in Substance Painter. Hope that's been useful. For now, this is John Dickinson from motionworks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.